G'day guys, we are Laughing the Island and we are starting our new YouTube channel. We want you to come along for the ride and first episode is having a look at our home on wheels. We're going to do a full walkthrough and show you what's good, what's bad and what we love. Guys, giving you the details of the van, this is a 2021 Lotus Trooper, 23.3 foot, triple bunk. It's got the separate toilet, separate shower, it's got the north-south main bed and we're going to show you what we've done differently to suit our needs traveling full time. We're going to start at the front and uh, work our way through and we'll just give a brief description of what we've got and what we haven't. So to start off with, the DO45 hitch, the caravan was rated to 4 tonne. I've now got it up to 4.4 tonne through an uh, engineer here in Perth. So it gives us more load that we can carry. Also on the front we have the anti-sway, so the Elko ESC. Any sway that happens in the van kicks on the anti-sway and stops the van from rocking around. So that's a big must. Cheaper on insurance as well, a little tip for you. Moving on to the front box, inside this side, we'll open her up and I have my barbecue set up. So that slides all the way out, plug the barbecue in. And we're away cooking. Geez, I don't have to pull it out, set it up on a table and, and whatnot. Just makes life a lot easier. The simpler things are on the road, the better it is. Up on the top, we have the Tully 3 carrier bike rack. This is one of the things that I'm not 100% happy with. I get three bikes up there, but they rub on each other and scratch. So that's something that I'm going to look at changing sometime down the future because we want to carry five bikes. At the moment we've just got the two kids bikes and we've left our bikes at home. Makes it a little bit awkward when we want to go for a family ride but we'll deal with that down the track. Every caravan's pretty much got a tunnel boot, um, stock standard. Got all my me, me drill for lowering and raising the arms. It's got our pegless clothesline and just bits and pieces. All of our camp chairs are kept in there, so it's nice and light, not too heavy on the front, which is what you want. That goes all the way through, obviously being the tunnel boot. On the awning, it's a bit windy to pull it out today, unfortunately, but it is the Dometic awning, and uh, we'll do some overlay, and I'll pull it out and show you how we set it up and, and do what we need to do to get that awning out. It's quite a large one. It's got a center arm on this one. We never had that before, but pretty protective of the weather. Moving forward, the drop down table. We love it in this location, so it was actually put in behind us, but we moved it to here. So whenever we walk in and out, you've got a beer, put it in there, walk inside, you know, life's easy. It, it's a great thing. Again, got the power outlet, so with the inverter and that that we've got, we can plug thermo mix in, cook outside on the table. It's a great, great thing to, to have. We've opted for the larger windows throughout the van, so you'll see that there are quite large windows. We'll point them out as we go, but the more window space in your van, the more light, the bigger it feels, and also when you're free camping, the more wind that comes through to cool you down on those summer days. To, to get into the van, we've opted for the double step on this one. With the air suspension, it sits a little bit higher, so we've opted for the double step so the kids don't have to step up as far. Moving on, this is one of my favorite things of the van, the Cruise Master Auto Ride Height. Now, it's on auto at the moment. Now we get to camp, flick that to manual. We can lower and raise the suspension to get it, get it level. Full airbags, airbag man, full system. It is seriously a game changer. You don't feel bumps going over the caravan. The caravan doesn't bump. It's all cushioned, it's beautiful. We'll get under there and we'll show you the full setup and what it looks like, but you still have to get it level when you get to camp. It's not just gonna sit there and, and get it right for you. So a little tip there as well. It's not auto level, it's auto ride height. That's the official term. Just behind that, we have the Fusion speaker. Um, when we first got it, this thing cranks. I don't think we're ever gonna use it where it cranks that loud, but hey, it's a bloody good thing to have, isn't it? <laughs> um, bit of a party going on. This thing here is seriously next level. And to complement it, it's got the Fusion outside control systems, the TV outlet, the plug, 
uh, all your TV antenna and that, so you can watch TV out here, have it playing through the speaker so you can hear it, no worries. So another little tip for you when you're choosing your lights underneath your awning, we've got one, two, three, and one above the tunnel boot. Now I opted to not put one above the door. So when you put one above the door, what happens? All the bugs, they go straight to that light. When you open your door, it's like a suction. Open it, close it, sucks it. All the bugs straight inside, your caravan's full of little bites that the kids don't like. So another little tip there. Just another one with these lights is that they are actually bug and white. So they're orange and white, just depending on which setting you put it on. So if it's too many bugs out, you want a bit of light, turn the orange on. If there's no bugs, turn the white on and it is bright as out here. Tires, obviously Lotus give you BFGs. They, um, we, we've opted bigger tires again. We've obviously got the big car. We want a bigger tire so that we can get onto the beach like we are now. Let these bad boys down and you've got a bigger footprint. These ones are 285 70 R17s. This is our first trip with them, but so far, performing really well. All right guys, so now we're gonna do the driver's side of the caravan, so that's the off side. It was a bit windy, so we spun the car and caravan around, and we'll get started. On the stone guard, there's the tap. When the pumps are on, water can come out of there. You can fill up buckets, clean your feet, and do what you need to do with it. The front box, on this side, I've got some kids' balls in there, and my bag of tools. So obviously being a mechanic, I want to work while we're on the road. So I carry a little bit more tools than what I needed so that I can pick up work along the way. You obviously don't need this many tools. That weighs about 30 kilos. So it's on the generator slide. So it can slide out and slide back in so I can access it nice and easy. So just at the front, we have our fuses. So power in, all your main power supply comes in here and anything that happens, the fuses will look after it. Just like your home fuses. It'll trip it, protect all your caravan, and make sure that it's nice and safe. So this one's the other side of the tunnel boot. I keep all my hoses and power lines and table ready to go. So it's, I can get out of the car, set the caravan up, grab all that stuff out, and we're set up within five minutes. So we have a couple of offside lights on here as well. They are buggers, bug and white as well. This one's for the tunnel boot, and then the other one's for the outdoor shower, which I'll show you. Outdoor shower. When you're down the beach like we are now, you don't want sandy feet. You don't want to uh, get any sand in your caravan. You've got hot and cold water. That pulls out. You can set it up here and you can have a shower outside. Same as the other side, we've got the bigger windows over here. You open that up, airflow comes in, fly screen up, no bugs get in. And we've got the hot water guys. Instant hot water on this one. No more waiting for the gas to heat it up. It's instant like that. 51 degrees, beautiful showers. Washing the dishes is easy. Over here, these are the water tanks. Three 95 litre tanks and one 50 litre tank for drinking. Now the idea is, is to keep your drinking water separate from your main water. If you get any dirty water or salty water that sometimes you do around Australia, you can use that in your showers, you can use that in your dishes. You don't want to be drinking it. Having water is one of the hardest things. Power and water. You got enough water, you can stay out in the beach we're at your campsite for free and live for, live for as long as you want to without having to worry about changing your water. So you've got a 12 volt power here, like your cigarette lighter power. So if you've got a compressor that you need to pump your tires up with, you can actually use this as your power so that you don't have to drag it all around there. The closer the power is so that you can pump your tires up, the easier it is. So this is the one that nobody wants to talk about. This is the toilet. Jade doesn't even know it exists. She believes that a toilet fairy comes along and just empties our toilet. But at the end of the day, it's this guy that always has to do it. I'm not allowed to use it, but I'm allowed to empty it. So it's just your normal toilet. I won't pull it out. It's your normal cassette. It does its job. Nobody likes it, but it's a part of van life, isn't it? So the kids' bunks, the windows that come with this setup that we've got, you'll see inside, the windows only come to this big. And like I was saying before at the front, the bigger the windows, the more airflow, the more light, the bigger the caravan feels. So we extended these by over half of what they originally were. All the way up, three bunks each have their own window. Nice and bright, nice and flowy. So on the rear of the van, we have the twin jerry can holders. Pretty much standard, you can carry fuel or water. On this occasion, we've got a fuel can and we've got a water can, but they're both empty. I don't know if we'll ever use them, to be honest with you. LED lights bottom and LED lights top. In the center, we've got a LED 
light bar. So if you're reversing at night, you turn that light bar on, you've got all the light that you need, and then your reverse camera underneath. So that reverse camera obviously connects into the back of your car, got the screen in the car. So as you're driving, you can see if there's any cars coming behind you, and you can let them pass, or when you're reversing, you can see how far back you can go. This is my boat trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that'd be all right, dude. <laughs> Good. <laughs> all right. So here on the back, we've got my boat trailer. Uh, it's all folded down, and this is where it gets stored. The rear bumper has four posts that connect to the caravan. So this one's not going to break. The trailer only weighs 38 kilos, so it's solid on the back. Moving on, we've got one spare tire. We opted for one this time. One, because of the trailer, and two, we never ever popped the tire last time, touch wood, and we just feel as though I can I can repair them or get them fixed somewhere along the way. So we've gone for the one tire. Got the rubbish bin on the back. That is, if we're free camping, all of our rubbish in bags can go in here, and then at the end of it, as we drive out, we can chuck it in the bin. Moving around this side, if you have a look under here, we've actually got a wood box. So as you're driving into camp when you're free camping, it's got storage so you can collect all your firewood and you can store it in here. Now I normally store it on top of my roof of my car. It wasn't too great for my car. So to have this option now and carry all my wood in there, bloody hands up. Hands up, bloody thumbs up. So we're gonna move into the interior now and Jade's gonna take over. But before we do that, she's cooking us some yummy bacon and egg McMuffins. So we're gonna detach the car and we're going to go film next week's episode of the walk around the car. I'm Jade from Lapping the Island. I'm going to show you our home on wheels. I'm going to start from the back in the kids' bunk room and take you through to the front. We've got a triple bunk at the back. They are seven foot long, 7.7 .7 foot long actually. We put fans at the end of the kids' bunk beds. We've got USBs in their bunk beds each. They've got a pouch that can fit their iPads and all their little gadgets and gadgets. Because the bunks are so long, I've put a toy box at the end of the bunk beds and they've still got plenty of room at the end. We added longer windows to the bunk area for each bed for more airflow and we also added a hatch that doesn't come with the bunk beds, the bunk area, sorry. We also added a TV bracket for the kids in here and a TV aerial so they get to watch TV in peace and quiet without us. Yeah, I think that's all. Oh, and the kids' storage. So in the kids' storage area, normally it comes with a panel down here, and it's also two doors that open up, but to make more space, utilize the area, I guess you could say, I took that out and I've just got it all open and one big cupboard door. With the two doors, you lose a lot of space because of the brackets on the side, and with the panel in the middle, you lose heaps of space. So I did that, and now I have managed to get bigger tubs in there for the kids, and that's literally kid one, kid two, kid three and that's their clothes that they used to travel with. Down here, we have one of my favorite items to a caravan that you need to have in a caravan. Um, I've got the Kamik four kilo washing machine. It's a lifesaver. I keep my powder up the top here in my washing bag there and it runs 24 seven when you're traveling. <laughs> the kids also have a door that, so at night time when they're sleeping, I can close it off. And yeah, that's fantastic to give them a bit of privacy. And that's the bunk area. Moving on, the bathroom. All right, so we've got toilet, sink, all drawers throughout here. Now these drawers are deceiving. When I first saw them, I didn't think I'd see much in them, fit much in them. I've managed to get a heap of stuff in these drawers. Black sink. Don't know if I'm a fan about the black sink. I may change that in our next van. It seems to leave like a lot of residue when the kids like brush their teeth and the toothpaste and soap and that. Um, I've scrubbed it this morning so you can't see it. We've added a soap holder and I've added shelves. So here, this is where we store all our toilet paper and our um, toilet tablet things. Potty thing. 
we've also got the toilet roll holder now this is a peeve of mine they've put it here so if you go to the toilet and the doors open which everyone in our caravan normally does you've got to reach right back to get the toilet paper i think it needs to go on this side so if you're building one of these caravans add the toilet roll holder here we've got um towel rails here we've got an awesome large shower <laughs> um, this is awesome as well it has like um three different pressures that you can change to and this goes up and down and Lani's always got the plug-in and this turns into a nice little bath for her as you can see all five of us could fit in here it's huge I've added also a, a broom show me the broom assistant number one <laughs> I've added a little broom hook here Genius invention, and that's the bathroom. Bringing to my domain, the kitchen. In the kitchen, we have heaps of storage. The brains of the battery system, and, or actually the brains of everything is in here. Hot water and a drive, Derek will go through all that with you. This is perfect for all your plates and bowls and your cups up the top, it fits perfect. I've got an awesome microwave. We've got four USB points here power water we've got a water filter and we've got just normal water oh we've got water no we don't have water i told derek to fill it with all gas i didn't have electric this time grill we opted out for no oven in this van because we've got the weber and we just never really used it in the other van next time i will Definitely consider looking at induction. Um, it wasn't till after we got the caravan that Derek said, oh, we should have got induction. And I was like, why didn't you tell me? I wish I knew. Um, down here, I have my slide out pantry. Now this drawer's got all our containers in it. It did have my glad wrap in it. If you follow our story, you would have seen that I got the drawer stuck last night and Derek had to pull all these cupboards apart. This is my pots and pans. I've got toaster, toaster and toaster sandwich maker. That's all I use for cooking, literally. I've got one pot, one pan and one little, little pot. And I've got my rice cooker and my salad pot. That's all I use for cooking. Now down here, this is my secret little hiding space. This is where I hide all my toilet paper. <laughs> and that's awesome down there in a caravan I think you have to have a spot for everything and you can't just shove everything in so we live a very minimalistic life and everything has a place and everything has to be kept neat otherwise it just becomes a jimble jamble this is my junk drawer I don't want you to see in there because that's really disgusting <laughs> Now, this is our cutlery drawer. Like I said, I think everything needs to have a place. We don't have a lot of cutlery. We have five knives and forks, one for each person. Very minimal stuff in there. Now, this is a game changer. The rubbish bin. Now, I don't need this side, so I'm actually going to take this out and somehow Derek's going to figure out how I can use that for more storage and maybe put my pressure cooker at the back there because there's heaps of room in that cupboard. But last caravan our rubbish bin always hung over the side here and having this here is awesome if you're building a caravan i suggest you have a built-in drawer for your rubbish bin now over to this side we added a massive fridge and freezer this is 224 liters so it's probably the same size as what i had in my old house and i can fit so much in here it is awesome so we're packed up because we are heading off free so i've got a whole heap of stuff in there at the moment now i also added a pantry now this doesn't come standard with this caravan for me this was non-negotiable i needed oh my secret little uh um this is Derek's just checked some stuff in there this is something i think I couldn't go traveling without. I need to have all my cup, all my stuff in there. I've organized it all. So breakfast is on this shelf. Um, dinners are on this shelf. All my canned stuff. And then all my baking stuff's down there. And then the kids' junk's right up the top. 
what we did do is this was actually an L-shaped lounge and we cut it short so I could add this in and I've got no problems with that because this couch even though it's not an L shape it's still a little bit longer than what we had in the 21 foot caravan. Now this table moves back, forth, in, out. It goes all around. It even goes down if you want to turn this into a bed. I added leather wallets here so I can put our laptops and all our bits and pieces go in here. Underneath here, Derek will show you after, that has all the, I don't know, the batteries. Derek's stuff, I don't know. It's got everything that runs the caravan. In here's all the kids' schoolwork and mummy's wine to keep her sane. And all here's our electrical stuff. These are huge. Like, even with my pantry as well, I didn't mention, but this is so deep. So it's not, doesn't look very wide, but honestly, look, I can't even put my hand all the way to the back there. Like, it's still got heaps and heaps of room. And I love that. What comes with this is normally the USB down is down here, which we thought was just stupid. So we put we put the USB up here. That was a great idea. The kids are always charging something up here. And um, we've got a PowerPoint down there. Yeah, we've got lights, speakers in here. We also added. See, there's a whole heap of USB chargers. That's for all our headlights and everything like that in there. So Derek, it's like a charging dock, I guess you could say. We've got a gas heater, love my gas heater. It's been freezing in Perth and I have had that running literally 24 seven. In our last van, it was over here and I don't know why I didn't pick it up, but it's over here. It's much easier if it's over here, so keep that in mind if you are putting a gas heater in. TV on a bracket that literally everyone say, a lot of people say, oh, you can't watch TV when you're sitting down, there, when you're in the lounge room, but you definitely can watch TV when you're sitting in the lounge room. So that's awesome. We also added fans in for each of us, one for me and one for Derek. Down, oh, I've got a PowerPoint down here. Down here's my shoe cupboard. So that's where I keep all my shoes. Massive long drawer, that's all my bathers. Cupboards, these, we put shelves in here. These shelves, honestly, they go again, like I still can't reach the back of these cupboard so that's full of clothes again that's where we keep all our jackets and that is literally all I have of clothes and there's no other cupboards in a secret stash of clothes we added pouches here this is the radio should have been on Derek's side there are USBs here I will suggest if you are gonna have USBs next to your bed head to put them here instead of here because when you're sleeping at night this little bit here gets knocked quite a lot and I can see it getting broken quite easy. It hasn't broken yet. Um, we've got surround sound speakers over the bed also, which is awesome. Aircon. This aircon runs off our inverter. So our inverter's not on. Oh, it is on. Aircon switch isn't on. So I turn the aircon switch on. We are literally on the beach, middle of nowhere, not connected to any power and I've just turned the aircon on. It's really quiet as well, so it's not one of those humming aircons that make heaps of noise. This is awesome. I think it's a Harriet or something. We added, um, this is different as well. We got a Four Seasons hat, or no, All Seasons hat, or Four Seasons hat, I don't know. This is, I don't know about this. The other one used to be a hatch and you lifted it up. Derek loves it because you can have a, like little vents open when it's raining. I don't know if it gets as much airflow as the other one. I'm still deciding. Don't know yet. I think I'm going to add a little leather pouch here. I've got beautiful crimp safe door here. Another leather pouch. Leather pouches everywhere so that stuff isn't jimble jambled around. I hate it. As you can see, I like my van to be nice and clean and everything has to have a place. So when you walk in, that's our... Um, everything turns on from that so I can turn on all my lights I would suggest I don't know what's happened with our van we've got to speak to Lotus the kitchen and our master bedroom light switches on all together there's not a two-way switch where it turns on separately on its own so we're gonna try and figure that out under here the bed so we took the mattress out that we got from Lotus and we put a Mr. Mattress Man mattress in. As you can see, there's heaps of storage under there and that's where all our bits and bobs go. Shoes, school blankets, school, um, school stuff, whatever's extra goes under there. And that's pretty much 
shit. Um, oh, something I will add. So we've added bigger windows. Oh, and the window for the bedroom. God, I forgot about that. This doesn't come standard. It's closed down at the moment, but we have had that open every single night. Rain, hail or shine. And it is so nice to have that fresh air flowing through there and just have that beautiful view. Um, I definitely would suggest putting um, window at the bed head. Oh, and our leather. Okay, check this out. Come over here, guys. So, Lotus, well, lots of caravans come, all their leather comes um, like crisscrossed and it has lots of little stitches in it. So when you're traveling, all dust and stuff gets stuck in it and it's a pain to keep clean. So what I did was I asked them just, I just wanted plain stitching. I didn't want anything and I did the same for our bed head. All the leather pouches, everything is just one sort of thing. So I can just go, there's no sand stuck in there and it's just one bang and everything comes out. So that's another hot tip if you're building a caravan. Don't get the cross stitching. What else is there? I think that's it. Yeah. All right, to pick up where Jade left off, I'm going to cover all the battery system, the solar, and everything on the roof. So let's get into it and have a look. So we take this cover off. We whack that up on the bed. Gives us a nice big storage. So in here, we have the full Enerdrive Red Arc system. So it's a com combination, the best bits of both, to work together as one system. So what they've used is the two 200 amp hour lithium batteries from Enerdrive, coupled with the 2600 watt inverter, running through the Red Arc battery management system and DC to DC charger. It all marries up with the Red Arc Red Vision controller, which is up here. So the Red Arc Red Vision can be controlled through an app on your phone. You download it and you can control everything. So I can turn lights on, turn lights off, check water, how much water we've got in each tank, check how many days we've got or hours we've got until the batteries are flat. We can check absolutely everything through the app and through this. It's it's a it's an awesome bit of kit. If, you, if you're going to get a caravan, I'd recommend doing this. It just makes life easier. Less switches, less worrying about which switch does what. It's all here and it's all on your phone. All the fuse panels are up here. Easy access. You don't have to worry about trying to find which one does what. It comes with full descriptions of which one does what. You can test it. You can see which ones are blown makes life a lot easier. Now to turn on the inverter, you just hit this button here and boom, she's on. And somehow we can turn on the aircon and we are set. So the system that they've got in this thing is unbelievable and we can stay off grid for days, weeks at a time. So that's it. All right guys, that's a wrap of this video. Hope you liked it. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in. We'll answer them the best that we can. Next video, we're covering the tow vehicle, so stick around for that one. Um, until then, we'll see you next time. Right. See you guys. Bye.